everyone, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Today we'll be taking a look at, and I'll show you how to install the Roadmaster Direct Connect base plate kit on our 2020 Honda Accord Sport. Our base plate is going to be that key connection point between our vehicle and our tow bar. Now, the base plate is one of our key components in our flat towing setup. And for this particular one, we have our base plate, our tow bar, our diode wiring, our safety cables. And you might want to consider adding a supplemental braking system as well. Our base plate is actually mounted to the frame of our vehicle, so it's going to be a really strong connection point. And in this particular vehicle, it does replace that front factory bumper beam. I really do like how this base plate kit looks on the front of our vehicle. It's pretty concealed and it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like a lot of other base plates do. And we didn't have to do a whole lot of trimming, which is nice because if we ever want to take it off, we don't have to worry about there being a bunch of open holes in the front of our vehicle. And our safety cable tab comes out right here. It's really easy to access to get all of our components off. Then we can take off our tow bar. Then to take your arm out, you simply pull out on this, twist down, and our arm will come right out. And that's what I was saying. It looks really nice on the front of our vehicle. Nothing protrudes other than our uh, safety tab. Now when we're ready to connect, we want to make sure our pin is facing down. We're just going to push our arm in like so and then turn it and you'll hear a nice click where this pin locks in. There is a spring in here that way we can pull it and undo it and when we hook up it automatically springs down. Then we grab the arm from our tow bar, push it into our arm, add our pin and we can drop our tab through here and lock it down and we're ready to hit the road. Our base plate is going to be a steel construction so it's going to be very strong and it's going to hold up well over time. It is going to have a nice black powder coat finish just to help resist rust and corrosion as well. Not only does the black powder coat finish help the base plate but it also blends in with the front of our vehicle. And as far as installation is concerned it's really not that bad getting it on. We don't need any major tools and we don't have to drill any holes which is really nice. There are a couple bolts that are hard to access but if you just take your time and really focus on getting the nuts and bolts on correctly you'll have no problem getting this installed. So we've talked about the features and I've talked a little bit about installation. I'll go ahead and show you how we got ours installed. To start our installation there's going to be four bolts located right here on our air box. We're going to take these four push pins out I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver or you could use a nylon pry tool if you'd like. I'm just going to twist up then pull them out. Again there's going to be four of them. With those four pins removed we can now pull up on our air, air intake and pull it off right here. This just snaps right over this tube here. With our air box removed we're now going to be removing our headlight covers. There's going to be three push pins on each one for both sides. Take that same flat blade screwdriver, go underneath and pry up. Simply pull out. You might have to work your way around the push pin just to get it to pop out evenly. And we can simply take this off and we'll do the same thing on our driver's side. On each side there's going to be this plastic fender guard. We're going to pop out these two push pins and we'll repeat that same process on the other side. Be careful not to drop those as they can be kind of hard to get. Again, this will just pull right off and we'll repeat that same process on the other side. We are now ready to remove our radiator cover right here. It's going to be held down with two push pins, one located here and one located here. We're going to grab that nylon pry tool and just pull those out. With those push pins out, we can just lift up on our radiator cover. Our next step is going to be to remove our six push pin fasteners located on the front of our fascia. Again, I'm just going to come in with that flat bladed screwdriver, pry underneath and kind of turn it up. And then we can just pull those fasteners out. You do want to be careful not to scratch your paint. That's why I'm using the flat blade screwdriver. We are now going to be removing hardware inside of our wheel well liner. I do suggest turning your wheel hard to the right and then hard to the left for the passenger side just to give us a little bit more room to access this hardware. We're going to have a pushman fastener right here, right here, the Phillips head right here behind our air duct. 
one right above it, and then a push pin right up here. I'm gonna grab a small flat, flat blade screwdriver to get these push pins, and then a ratcheting Phillips head to get those screws. Now we're gonna move over to our passenger side and get all that hardware removed. Now we have our wheels straightened back out and put our car up in the air to remove some more fasteners. If you're doing it this, if you're doing this at home, you probably don't have a lift. I would suggest pulling your car up on ramps or jacking it up in the air just to give you a little bit more room because the front of this car does sit very low. We are now gonna be removing some push pins to get this splash shield down. There's gonna be a push pin located here, 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 and here. There's gonna be five on each side. Gonna grab that little flat blade screwdriver. Again, pry down, kind of twist it. We'll just pull these push pins out. We did have one more hidden Phillips screw located right here, securing our fascia to the fender. We'll go ahead and take that out using the same Phillips head drive. And there will be one on both sides. And we are gonna have to remove one more push pin located right here. I'm gonna grab that small flat blade screwdriver and pry down. We're gonna do that on each side. And before we actually pop our fascia out, I'm gonna take some blue painter's tape and just line all of our edges and around our headlight wherever our fascia is gonna possibly touch when we're taking it off. And again, this is just gonna protect the paint. That way we don't have any scratches or anything when we're done with our install. You don't have to be super precise with it. You just wanna make sure to cover any paint that might get cut. And now with an extra set of hands, we can start to pull off our fascia. On this corner, we're just gonna pull straight out carefully and then work our way towards the middle. Again, you don't wanna to pull too hard. We're just gonna start releasing our fascia tabs. And then as we get towards the middle, we wanna make sure to support the whole fascia and unplug our wiring harness. And pulling out on our fascia, there are a few tabs in here that we're gonna to have to pop. We're gonna reach in with a nylon pry tool and just kinda of pull up on these tabs that'll help release our tabs without breaking our plastic. There are gonna be a couple moving our way down the headlight. Now we can go ahead and carefully lift off our fascia. We do have an electrical connector here for our fog lights. We'll push down on this tab and pull our plug out. Now with our extra set of hands, we can carefully set our fascia off to the side. And if we follow along in our instructions, it is gonna tell us to take out our splash guard and our wheel well liner. I don't really see a need to do that because we still have enough room to access everything behind our headlight. So we're gonna skip that step and later on, if we need to take that out, we'll go ahead and do so. We are now gonna remove this brace here. There's gonna be four 10 millimeter bolts on each side. We'll go ahead and get those removed. Since this contains our hood latch and everything, I'm just gonna take it like so and fold it back. And this will give us plenty of room to access everything up here without having to unplug all of our lines. There are gonna be a few fasteners to hold on our headlight. They're all gonna be 10 millimeter. We'll start taking those off now. With all of our hardware out, our headlight will support itself, but we do wanna hold on to it just to make sure we don't drop it. There's gonna be little tabs here. We're gonna pull up on these and slowly slide our headlight out of place, making sure we don't disattach our wiring. Now with our headlight mostly out, we're gonna unplug these connectors. We simply push down on this tab here and pull out. And for this one, we push down and pull up. Just like so. Then we're gonna grab our nylon pry tool and pull this plug out of our headlight. That way we can set our headlights off to the side. Just like that, our headlight is disconnected. We're gonna repeat that exact same process over on our passenger side. We are now ready to remove our factory bumper beam. There's gonna be five 14 millimeter bolts located on each side. We'll go ahead and take those off. And 
And then just a good tip is to leave one bolt in on each side when you get all the hardware taken out. That way the bumper beam doesn't just fall off. Now moving over to our passenger side, we're going to get all these bolts broken loose. Then we're going to have one 10 millimeter bolt on each side that we need to get removed. So now we can go ahead and remove these last 14 millimeter bolts. It might be a good idea to have an extra set of hands just to hold the bumper beam so it doesn't fall. There are going to be little tabs on the inside of our bumper beam. We have to lift that kind of up and push it in to release that tab. And once we've done so, our bumper beam will come right off, like so. And this will not be reinstalled. Our vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control, so we are going to have to trim that bracket. I kind of marked out where we're going to be trimming, so we're going to be cutting this portion off. We're going to be using a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel, and we're going to do this on both sides. And if you don't have a Dremel tool, this can be cut out with 10 snips. Just keep in mind, it does require quite a bit of grip strength. And after we've cut this out, I just suggest hitting it with a file just to knock down those edges so we don't accidentally cut ourselves. We can now grab our brace, and a good way to tell which side goes on the left or right is the left, the top is going to have three holes, and then we're going to make sure we want to line up that outside hole. So this is going to be our driver's side. We'll just hold it up kind of in the right location, and then get our hardware started. We are going to use the same hardware that our stock bumper beam came with. We can just hold our bracket up and get our hardware loosely installed. We'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. Our next step is going to be to get this bracket into our frame rails right here. It's going to slide in through our base plate like so. And then we'll line these two holes up here with the holes on our base plate. And on that inside part, we're going to be putting the spacer in like this and then sliding our bolt through with a flat washer on the outside like this. We'll be adding another flat washer and our nut on the inside. Now I suggest taping this to our uh, bracket here and making it a little bit easier to get that all in together. Can it, it can be kind of tight and it's hard to get this to stay in the horizontal position. I'll show you how we did it on the driver's side just for some reference. Now it's kind of hard to see down in there, but you can see the blue painter's tape where I taped that spacer to that bracket. And again, we're gonna be adding that longer five inch bolt on the outside with a flat washer, pushing it through that spacer and our bracket, and then meeting it on the other side with a flat washer and our nut. If you look right down here, you can see our new hardware. We did have to take out this 10 millimeter bolt on our air box. And we wanna make sure that we're using red Loctite on all of our hardware. We just want to slide our hardware through here, then we'll get a lock washer and nut on the back side. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. We're going to use an 18 millimeter wrench. We can now grab our brace. We'll slide this into here. And then insert hardware, that way it can hold itself up. Before I get this all tightened down, I'm going to go ahead and trim our air dam right here where our wiring bracket is making contact. This is where we're going to be trimming out. We want to try to pull it as tight as possible. And I'm just going to take a pocket knife, kind of make a mark following that. And actually our pocket knife will cut through it because it is a softer rubber. Again, we're just going to go all the way down it like so. Then we do need to trim a little bit more off the back here. We're just going to cut down like so. There's a little ridge that we'll cut to. Just like that. We'll take our knife across and cut our rubber. Now we have all of our components installed for our base plate. We're going to come back and torque it down. All the torque specs for each piece of hardware will be listed in our instructions. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall our air box since we had to take it off to get some of that hardware on. Everything for our base plate has been installed, but if you are installing any other flat toe components on your vehicle, I suggest leaving that front fascia off because it will be a whole lot easier to run all of our wiring and make our connections. Our kit does include a stencil so we know right where to drill our hole. 
I'm gonna grab a yellow paint marker and just make a little mark right here in the center. And then we can drill right in the middle, right there. We're gonna make those same marks on the other side. I'm gonna use a two and a quarter inch hole saw because that's the diameter of our base plate. Now when you're using a hole saw, you wanna start really slow and let the blade do all the work. Just hold it in one spot really carefully and then you can slowly add more speed. Just like that, and we'll repeat that same process on the other side. With these two holes drilled, now we're going to drill a hole right here for our diode wiring. I'm gonna use a step drill bit, and then we'll just slowly drill it out, and then we can grab our plug, and then see how much farther we need to drill. Before we can reinstall our front fascia, we do have to get our headlights put back in. We're gonna put a few other things in in reverse order that we took them apart. Now with an extra set of hands, we can slowly put our fascia back on and make sure that our base plate is gonna line up. Our holes were a little off center, so I did have to enlarge them a little bit on this side. As you can see, it's more of an oval shape now. I just used a Dremel tool and kind of followed it around to keep that same radius. With everything hooked up to our RV, we know we're ready to hit the road. That's gonna do it for a look at an installation of the Roadmaster Direct Connect Baseplate Kit for our 2020 Honda Accord Sport.